So, I'm here in Mount Shasta, and just want to go over the gear that I've used so far, um, and how it's working out. In the past, I've done these videos where I like went through the gear I was taking before I went, but I think it's better to do to go through your gear, you know, after you've actually hiked and comment on things that have changed or things that didn't work. But um, anyway, so I've been hiking on the PCT from Mexico. I did skip over sections D, E, and F, which is basically the area from El Cajon Pass up to Walker Pass. So I still haven't done twice. This is a review, basically a halfway review, because I've done now about 1,200 miles. So I'm close to halfway, given my flip-flop. But anyway, so um, all this gear I've had since I started, if there's anything that's changed, I'll mention it. But just to start off, uh, the pack I'm using is the uh, Osprey Exos 58. You can see here. And this is a pretty light, this is a, this technically is an ultralight pack. Um, on the AT, the Appalachian Trail, I used the Osprey uh, Atmos 65. Um, the Exos is lighter, um, but you know one of the issues is you really you really have to keep your your pack weight below thirty pounds with this, otherwise it does start getting a little bit uncomfortable, um, just from the straps. Um, but that that has got me to uh, decrease my my overall weight. Um, so I like having a lighter pack. Um, it's you know it's it's definitely. Uh, lighter than the Atmos by a by a couple by like a, over a pound, um, so changing to this pack from the Atmos allowed me to drop my base weight, um, and I'll go through some of the other stuff that I that I used to to lower my base weight. Um, I I am about I think seven or eight pounds close to ten pounds lighter than I was on the AT, just from my pack. Anyway, with the Exos, um, this pack has worked out great. It's similar to the Atmos. It's got this mesh. A lot of the Osprey bags have this mesh thing on the back where you can put water bottles and things. Um, I have fallen on this pack. I've fallen backwards onto this pack a couple of times and you can see that there are some rips and tears in here. And that's just from wear. Um, it's still holding up, but there are, there are some holes back in here. Um, the other thing that happened with this pack is I was down on I was in like San Bernardino Forest, uh, Deep Creek, I think, and I basically stepped on a rattlesnake. I, I came really close to getting bit by a rattlesnake, or at least stepping on it. And I yanked on, I had my hands, I don't use trekking poles, so I had my hands in my straps, and I was holding on to one of the, the straps here that you use to tighten the shoulders, um, and I literally jumped and I yanked, I was, trying to like pull myself by my straps away from the snake and I broke uh, this thing where is it I broke uh, this here this little thing here which happened to me with the Atmos so um, this is the second pack I've had from Osprey that's had a broken one of these and I've suggested it before I don't know why they don't make these a metal but anyway what I did is I used a carabiner and just tied it off here and this has worked all the way from before El Cajon Pass. So, you know, I've gone over, I've gone, cl I've gone close to a thousand miles with this strap broken, just using a carabiner, which I think is a testament to how well designed and well made Osprey packs are. You know, Osprey has a lifetime warranty. I know that if I give them a call, I'm sure that they'll replace this pack. But I'm trying to see as how far I can get with the pack as it is. Um, you know, it's still totally functional, but it's a very good idea to carry a couple of carabiners in the bottom of your pack in case something breaks. Because when this broke, when this snapped, um, you know, this pack wasn't really old. It's just uh, the the physics of the moment caused this to snap. So, and I'd highly suggest having this and some paracord in your pack, um, regardless of the manufacturer, because. If you ever do need to, you know, you might not need to use it, but when you do, it makes life a lot easier than, you know, uh, I, I don't know what I would have done without this. So that was really good. Again, with all Osprey packs, they've got this external frame, which I like a lot. Uh, the hip belt on these is good. 
the pockets are very good on this too. I keep uh, my Nikon. The other one of the things I have been using on this hike, which is different than, than some of the other hikes, is I have uh, my Nikon Cool Pick. Those new, much better uh, quality photographs and uh, video. The problem is that I can't upload this. It's a real. It's kind of a pain to upload this. Um, I can't just like upload these on Wi-Fi to YouTube or Instagram. I have to like download them, and so that slows things down. But um, the quality of photos is a lot better when you're able to adjust the actual uh, the focal length of the the lens. So this Nikon Coolpix A1. I, it's also waterproof, so I've actually gotten photos of fish too, which is really cool. I like this is a piece of gear I really like. Um, I also have in here. This is my. This is my monocle. It's an REI monocle. Just for for looking at birds and you know spying on people and stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm actually gonna put this in my bounce box. I'm I'm starting a bounce box now, just on some of the gear that I I like. But um, I'm trying to see uh, what it's like dropping a couple of pounds of stuff like this. But um, you know, I've enjoyed having this. It's you know, I don't use it all the time, but it doesn't weigh a lot, and it's it's fun to have, you know, a little uh, way to to get a close up on birds or animals or the terrain. So I liked having that. So yeah, with the Osprey, you've got the, the hip belt. the The pockets are great on these. Um, and again, the strap with the carabiner. You know, I've gone a thousand miles with a broken strap using this carabiner. Um, now, what I like about the Exos also is that there, there is a head bag that comes with this pack. I've removed it just to save on weight. Um, but it was very good having that head bag when I had to have that huge bear canister because it gave me a little bit of just an extra room to keep stuff. Um, so, inside my pack, what I did is I took my tent, my... Um, uh, I'm using a, an L.O. Bean Microlite FS tent, which weighs a pound and a half. Um, it has a bug net. It's a very good tent. Um, I, sh I, I should probably devote a separate video to it, but I've put my tent in here with the ground sheet, the, the poles, you can see here, and also my, um, my thermo rest. Because I have, uh, I'll show really quick my... Rest here. Now this, all of this, all of the stuff that's in this bag had been in my pack, but when I had that bear canister, I was trying to figure out ways to carry everything. So what I ended up doing is I got this, this still, this sill bag. Um, keep my tent in it. Keep my uh, my sleep pad here. This is the Neo Air. This is the the one that's uh, four season. And you can see it's it. the Neo Air, Thermarest Neo Air. This has been great. Um, I like the, it, when it's cold, it's great. You know, it, it's not uncomfortable when it's warm, but when it's cold, this, this definitely holds heat a lot better, well, you know, a lot better than uh, uh, any other sleep pad I've ever used. So I really do like this Neo Air. Um, it costs a little bit more than their other Neo Air. There's another one that doesn't have this sort of reflective material. And um, I'd recommend this. You know, it, it's a little more expensive, but I like having something that I know I can rely on if it does start getting colder. And there have been, I've been out here in July in California and had um, freezing rain and had nights where it was in the probably high 30s, low 40s. But probably, I'm, I'm probably not going to have anything like that until I get up into Washington State again, but I like having it. So, yeah, I have a sill bag. People will say, why do you, why do you, you know, carry that extra weight? It's a sill bag. But um, I like keeping my tent and my sleeping pad dry. And this allows me to do that and freeze up some extra space in my pack. So I've had this up here. I've also had it at different times down on the bottom of the pack. Because with this, with the Exos, there's some strapping here. You can strap things onto the bottom of the pack. But um, I've come to just keep it right up here on top. 
So inside my bag, you've got basically with this with this pack, you've got the hip the hip pouches, this mesh thing on the back, and one main compartment here. If you have the head bag, you get two other pockets, but you know, this is just uh, this this is basically just a, a, a flap that snaps over when you remove the head bag, which I like a lot. So anyway, in my pack, I still have my LL Bean Pro Shell. This thing here. This thing, where is it? My LL Bean Ascent Pro Shell, which is a very good, uh, high quality Gore-Tex coat, which I like a lot. Now, what I did because I got rid of my head bag and I have some little little things like pens, my headlamp, you know, just miscellaneous small pieces of gear that I, if I'm looking for them, I'll, I'll want to find them quick. What it is, I just put all of that in the pockets of this and zipped up the pockets. So this is sort of my, it's my raincoat. It's also my floating uh, head bag. It, you know, I can put it anywhere in my pack and I, I can go for it immediately. I know where my, my uh my headlamp is and stuff like that. Let's see what I got in here. There's a pen. Um for my headlamp I've got the Tika Petzl. Let's see what is it? This one here. This is the Tika Petzl. This is this is a rechargeable headlamp. Um and I like it. I like having a rechargeable lamp. It it makes it a lot easier. I don't have to carry on batteries. Um a little greener than the other headlamps I've had. But this this has a number of settings. I've had a lot of trouble changing the settings on this. And I'm actually probably gonna take this back to REI and see if either I'm doing something wrong with it or there's something wrong with the headlamp. And I'm inclined to think there's something wrong with the headlamp um, because I have a lot of trouble switching it from the red light back to normal. Um, just the buttons on it, I don't think that they work. But it, it's been a very good light. It, it's very bright. Uh, good for, uh, good for. Um, it's comfortable. Um, it's good for night hiking and just around camp in the dark. And it, it does hold the charge um, well. I haven't had any problems with the battery losing, you know, losing charge or anything. But again, the the issue I have is just being able to change the settings on it. This is my Petzl Tika, uh, the rechargeable one. Good headlamp. Uh, let's see. Oh, I still have this. This is a my knife. I got this tiny little knife. I got this up in Maine. It cost me about two dollars. This is plastic. It's basically for cutting fishing line. But this is all the knife I've needed out here. You know, if I if I had a fishing rod, I'd probably have a, a better knife that I could cut fillet fish with and stuff. But this works for me right now. Tiny doesn't weigh anything. So again, this is my, my Gore-Tex coat, my raincoat, which I use also to work, help organize my pack. Um, I have here an iPad mini with a little shot case. This weighs about as much as a book, and I have about 10 books on here. This is I really like having this. I'm debating bouncing this ahead because um, I'm just trying to go really as light as I can. But it's, it's great to have to read when you get to town. You can surf the web, watch movies on it, all kinds of stuff like that. Really, really highly recommend having this instead of that Kindle, you know. So, and, and this I keep in, in the back of the Exos, there's this uh, pouch for a water bladder. So I keep my mini in there. Um, so, so it's got my, basically my toilet paper and stuff like that, Purell, and this zip here. This is just a little bag that has all my electronics. I had this exact same bag on the Appalachian Trail, as well as this battery. This is a Moffy battery, which is a little heavy, but with a rechargeable headlamp, an iPad mini, an iPhone, uh, batteries for my camera, I do like having a bigger battery. Um, and this, this, I've had luck with this. This will probably give me enough electricity for maybe five days. if I'm. If I, if I stretch it, I can probably get away with a week. And it's just one big battery, but it is heavy. This is a hefty battery. And it's two ports for charging. So this has worked well. Again, the entire Appalachian Trail, uh, Camino in Europe, it's still working fine. And this, this bag, also this stuff sack I, I had at the beginning of the AT-AT. 
and this coat I had at the beginning of the Appalachian Trail. Um, so those are some of the, the all-stars of my gear. It's just an extra mountain house I keep in my pack just for the next dinner. Um, this is my clothing bag. This is also a sill bag. Uh, people might say, oh, you don't need all those this, this stuff sacks. I really like having dry things when, it's, when it rains. Even now, it's warm. Uh, it's been dry. I don't... I, 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 having hiked in the winter, I really like keeping, I, I'm, I think it's very important to keep things dry, to have dry clothes when you're out in the middle of the woods. So this sole bag assures me of that. But one of the things I'm going to do is I'm probably bouncing about half of the, I'm, I, I'm thinking of bouncing this entire bag of clothes and just keeping my socks, because that will save me a couple of pounds right there. Um, but a lot of these clothes, I had long underwear here, change of clothes. I had them because in the Sierras at night it was freezing. I mean, it was only, it was less than a month ago, I was in freezing rain and I spent the night, it was about, you know, 40 degrees. And I was glad to have some extra clothes on. Um, but I'm bouncing a lot of the clothes I had. And for clothes, I have uh, Patagonia Capoline 3 bottom, Capoline zip hoodie, uh, it's a Capoline 4 hoodie which are great, both from Patagonia. Um, I had those the entire Appalachian Trail. My, my Patagonia clothing has held up extremely well. Um, for pants, I have these. These are REI Sahara. This is the second pair I've had out here. Um, the fabric, they're good. I like them. They dry quickly. But I have had problems with like ripping. Like This is a stick. Got caught in the cargo pocket here and ripped. Um, so I like these pants, but... They do come apart a little bit. Um, I also picked up a pair of these pants. Oh, they, and again, these are convertible, so they zip off. So they can turn into shorts. But I always wear them as pants. You know, because I'm weird. I like wearing pants. Um, these are a White Sierra. See, these are White Sierra. Uh, also convertible pants. And I like these. I, I, the, the cut on them is good. The, the thing that I kind of don't like, the pockets are a little smaller. The cargo pockets on these are a little smaller, and they, 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 they're tighter to your legs, so you can't put as much stuff in them. I, like, I kind of like these ones that, can, that bellow out a bit, that are bellow, that have, you know, can pop out, come out a bit, because I like keeping food in there, like my snacks. But um, I've liked these pants so far. Um, they've also held up a little better than the REI pants that I have. So we'll see how these go. So again, these are White Sierra convertible pants. Um, I recommend these, I, I like them. They've been good. I, I mean, I recommend these REI Sahara pants too, but these seem a little bit more durable. Anyway, um, I still have this. This is getting sent in my bounce bag. This is just my sleeping bag liner, which I rarely use. Um, so I have on, on my bag, I, I keep usually my food bags up on top with my clothing bags. Then I have underneath that my Tyvek, a piece of Tyvek that I like to spread out. I can put my gear on it. I can sit on it. I can use it as a, a seat when it's dusty. Um, this is also a backup in case something happens to my tent. I can you know, cowboy camp on this. I, I have. And it doesn't weigh very much. You know, it's just like an extra ground sheet in case I need it. Um, this is my rain cover for my pack just come in handy. Some people say, oh, you don't need that, but again, I really, I think it's very important to keep your stuff dry. Um, this is my puffy coat. It's the all, all out. It's got a Merrill brand on it. I got this from Merrill, and this is the coat that the zippers were pretty bad on this, so what I did is I took it to a seamstress and had her put on a better zipper. This has worked great, and this coat is excellent with my Gore-Tex shell. Goes really well with that. Now down here in the bottom back, I still have my Solo stove, which is a biomass stove. Um, this has worked out great. This stove has made it the entire Appalachian Trail, and so far the entire PCT. Use it every day to cook, and it's great. I really like having this. Highly recommend Solo stove. Very well built and well designed. Um, now down in here, I've got my sleeping bag. 
I st I'm using the compression sack that went with my other sleeping bag that I had on the AT. But this is a Nemo Siren. This is a rather expensive sleeping bag. I think it cost like three or four hundred dollars. I don't even remember off the top of my head. But it's a very good bag. Um, it's actually a quilt. It doesn't have any zippers. It has like these these strings. And this might seem weird, but honestly, when you get used to it, it works great. Um, this has kept me warm down into the 30s. It's rated to, I believe, freezing, like 32 degrees. And I've had it in you know 30 degree weather, and it's been great. Works really well with my uh, my sleep pad. And what you can do actually is you you slide this sleeping pad inside these strings and so you sort of make a little a little tube with this so you don't really need the zippers and this is very light this weighs i think a pound and people have looked at it and said that's your sleeping bag it's so tiny but no it's great so again this is the nemo nemo siren down and it is a 30 degree bag no i'm sorry a negative one Fahrenheit, ne negative one Celsius. Yeah, it's a 30 degree bag. So anyway, that's my sleeping bag. Um, down in here, got some platypus. Um, I had a problem, I had the platypus in the mesh pocket out here, and when I fell down, I actually ruptured two of them, so they have little rips in them. So I'm probably gonna get rid of them. Um, I've been doing well with just my, my new water bottle. I've been using the Nalgene. I've actually had this the whole the whole PCT this Nalgene um, Because I found I often have to scoop water and I like having a wider mouth I right right now. I, I'm basically for water just using this Nalgene and a Gatorade bottle um, You know these platypus though are very good to have because there are some long carries and um you know, you can, it's just an auxiliary water carrying device. You can just fold it up and put it in your pack. Um, these platypus bags also, you can put boiling water in these and they're designed not to crack, which is great when it's really cold. Um, you boil up some water, put it in a, um, a platypus, and then it's like a hot water bottle. You can just keep it in your, uh, in your sleeping bag with you. A good trick if you're a lady and you get cold or if you have you know cold feet or something of circulation these are really really handy to have in cold weather um let's see what else i got down here i don't have that much i have some bandanas i have like a class since 2015 pct pct class of 2015 uh bandana that i found um let's see some paracord I still have, oh, this is a backup spoon. I still have uh, my favorite thing, my favorite piece of gear, which is my, light, my titanium light my fire spork. I love this thing. Really do. Titanium light my fire spork. One of my, basically my favorite, my favorite piece of gear. Um, then down, I, 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 this is, I keep this on the outside here. I keep a little container of petroleum jelly to help with my solo stove. Uh, petroleum jelly is a very good uh, thing to have when you're trying to start a fire. It burns well. You can just put it on cotton or leaves or sticks, and it'll it'll help to uh, to ignite a fire. It's my Aquamira, which I don't use very much. And then I've got a little bit of bug, bug juice. I got this uh, Ben's bug dope. I haven't had a lot of problems with with bugs lately, but it could just be weather. But yeah, I do have a little deet in case I need it. Um, olive oil and Tabasco sauce in plastic containers. I have a screw top for the olive oil, and then I have uh, that one has a little thing that pops up so you can squeeze it. But olive oil, you know, 200 calories in a tablespoon, great way to boost calories in your meals. And Tabasco sauce will make anything taste good, or at least I think so. This is a plastic bag. Another platypus. I think I have, I have about four liters. Yeah, this is my other one. Four liters platypus. Those I'm probably getting rid of. 
Um, it's my little medical kit, which has some ibuprofen, some bandages, some chapstick, some tape for my feet, um, a nail clipper. Uh, I think I even have a moleskin in there. I also have some amoxicillin uh, and an antibiotic in case I get really sick. Uh, those might be Imodia. I, I never eat them, I just have them. But yeah, this is my little first aid kit, really small. And then this little ditty bag that has shaving cream, toothpaste, a razor, a little thing of Axe, you know, so I can smell good when I'm in town. Um, I am shaving on this, <laughs> on the PZD, unlike the AT where I had a giant beard. So I actually am shaving, brush my teeth with more regularity out here. Um, that's it. That's pretty much all I've got in here. Um, so this pack is, has worked out well. I really like it. My Exos 58. Highly recommend Osprey packs. Um, for shoes, I started out in the desert wearing uh, Merrill Graspos. And I did 340 miles to El Cajon. I did buy Smart Feet insoles. Or Super Feet insoles. Um, but I... Th those those shoes worked out really well, and I'm gonna wear them when I go back to do the uh, sections D, E, and F. But um, from Kennedy Meadows on, I wore the same shoes I wore on most of the Appalachian Trail, which are Merrill Chameleon Fives, and these have worked out really well. These shoes made it from mile 700, 706 to mile 1506, which is basically about 800 miles. Um, and they've worked out great. I, I probably put about 850 miles on these. Um, they are, and on the Appalachian Trail, I think I got close to a thousand miles from a pair of these. Um, you can see here, there's actually a, there's actually a hole. Like this is actually ripped all the way through the liner. Um, but these these stood up really well. I love Merrill shoes. I like these shoes a lot. Um, 800 miles. You can see that the, the Vibram sole is getting pretty worn here. Ooh, there's some schmeg on there. That's just dirt. <laughs> it's weird. But, um, yeah, I like these shoes a lot. And what I'm getting today in the mail at the post office right now, I have a pair of Moab ventilators, which cost about $100. These, these are no longer, this exact model is no longer manufactured by Merrill as far as I know. Um, you can see, like, these really came apart. But I really like wearing these. Um, Merrill is coming out. I, they have some other version of the Chameleon, Merrill Chameleon. I'm just not messing around with it because, like, I'm buying shoes that I know. Like, I've, I've had Merrill ventilators before, the Moabs. Um, so I'm just buying those because I know exactly what I'm getting. Um... You know, people complain that Merrill changes their their brands or changes their uh, styles too quickly. Like you get, you find a shoe you like, and then they uh, start they change around, manufacture a different way, and then you don't like it. So I'm sticking to the shoes I know. And again, Merrill shoes, highly recommend them. Um, for a hat, I start out with an outdoor research hat, which was like a boonie hat, um, you know, like an army kind of uh, floppy hat. And um, it was a great hat that kept my head cool, but I was getting sweat all over the outside of it, and it looked really gross. It looked like a, a frosted donut. So I've, I've opted to go back to what I wore on the Appalachian Trail, which is a straw hat. This one I picked up in Chester. I like it a lot. You know, I think it's a really, it's so much, it's very light, and it keeps my head cool. And I like the wide brim because it keeps my, my face shaded when it's really hot. And I can put feathers in it. So, so that's sort of my gear. Um, that's, that's about it. Um, I hope you liked the video. And let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that you want me to talk about in another video. So this is uh, my gear review for basically the first half of the PCT. Um, and I'll try to do another one when I finish. Dun dun dun.